somebody that grew up with baseball since he was eight years old. So some some head scratching moments, I guess, is what I'm saying are are, are likely they they've happened with Max and they're, they're likely to continue. But I I still think that he's showing signs of getting better and better both offensively and defensively. You get a young left handed hitter that can play defense and hit 20 home runs. You know, I know he hit 230. He needs to hit 275. Uh, you know, and all those, all those kinds of things. But at the very least, my thought has always been, well, and especially at this price that they got him for, well, if they have to platoon him, you know, at some point in time, because he's just not going to hit left-handed pitching, it's still, if he hits right-handers the way he, he certainly has the ability to, he'll be all, he'll be worth every bit of that. And they can go get a right-hand hitter to, you know, to platoon, uh, with him at a reasonable price. And, and, and that's a good, that's a good deal. The problem was the head scratch of how come he didn't hit, how come he didn't kill right handed pitching last year? So that's my only concern. I don't, I, I want him to get better against left handers, obviously, to be an everyday player. My concern was what happened against right handers last year? And, and I, I expect that will change, but it's something that we'll have to look at. Right. Absolutely. Uh, let's get into kind of the message this sends, because I think that's part of this as well. Uh, I do want to thank Tony Hoagland, your state farm agent in Champlin. Uh, Tony handles my insurance. He handles Michael Russo's insurance. And the uh, best way to find him is just Google Tony, H-O-A-G-L-U-N-D. Uh, very easy to work with. You can work via his app. Uh, you can work over the phone. You can work by email. A very responsive office. Hey, Minnesota sports fans. This is your local state farm agent, Tony Hoagland. I need you all to ask yourselves this question. If you're in an at-fault car accident and you are sued for $700,000, how much of that $700,000 will my current insurance company pay? If you are unsure or can't answer all $700,000, you need to give us a call. State Farm has been number one in car insurance since World War II and number one in homeowner's insurance since 1964. For a no-obligation review of your current policies, call us at 763-421-4900 or check out our website at www.champlininsurance.com. So I think when they do this, they're they're trying to protect themselves against these guys becoming you know, very productive and very expensive. They're trying to give themselves payroll certainty in the future. Uh, but I also think they're trying to send a message to all the young players in this current locker room, clubhouse, and throughout the organization that hey, if if you you know if you play well and if you do what we ask you to do. There are rewards there, and they're not necessarily, you know, five, six years away. Yeah, I think it's a great I, – I think it's it's smart on both of those levels. I think it's smart to wrap up young players that you believe in uh, early. Uh, you save money. Uh, you save boatloads of money that way. And I think it's – I think it's uh, – it, it's very smart way to, uh, to run your business, to have the courage to, to make – you know, take a stamp, put a stake in the ground. Say we we think the, these guys at these at at this price level uh, is is a terrific uh, terrific value for us. To your second point, the the other part of it is to your point uh, that uh, I think you want young players. Uh, that that is a carrot dangling out there uh, for everybody and uh, for players to know uh, that. I don't have to go through five or six years before I get a free agent kind of deal. I can, um, I, I, they will, they will look at me for what I've done, not so much for the, the free agency, uh, putting off the free agency deal. I think that's important. And, uh, and I think Rocco Baldelli made a uh, mention to it, mention of it, uh, as well. Just the, the idea throughout the organization that, that contracts are just, not uh, an issue for anybody, uh, front office or the player. Uh, the more that can happen, the more it can happen early in a player's career at reasonable prices. I think is is a good thing. I think the most important thing a, a team, one of the most important things a team can do, is to say, is to is to have the courage to to have an opinion, make a decision. Uh, we like this guy. We're going to sign him. Uh, in the face of boy, this could turn out to be horrendous. You have to. You have to have the courage to uh, of your convictions and say this is who we have, and and we like him and we think he's going to get better. And so here's the here's the deal. It may work out, uh, it, it may not work out, but I think you put you play the percentages as best you can. 
uh, the odds are in your favor on these deals and probably with, with other young players, that, that what they'll be able to sign them for, go ahead and, and do those deals. And as my colleagues at Star Tribune have pointed out, uh, they did deals like this with Len Perkins and Brian Dozier, and they ended up getting all-star caliber performances at very reasonable prices. And now, now if you look back and, you know, there was a time when Brian was hoping he was going to be a $25, $20 million player or something like that. You, and, you know, sadly for him, he never hit the big pay, payday. But you look at what they got out of Glenn Perkins and Brian Dozier over the course of the career and what they paid. They did, the, the Twins did very well under those circumstances. Yes, they did. And I, and I believe that they will do, um, they, they will come out, uh, smelling as well, uh, with, with these, uh, these deals, uh, as well. And it also accentuates, I think we talked about how this fits into the overall uh, team budget, the payroll, what it's going to be. It, it, it's it's gone up now without having without signing free agents um, any more free agents. So the payroll's gone up because they and they have to keep that in mind. As I said, they they're they're looking at a target payroll and looking at targeting young guys and saying, you know, that's part of it. This is going to they're going to make more money if they uh, now. Or at the end of next year, for or, you know, for some, or or the end of spring training for some. I mean, it, they're going to pay more money for younger players, and they have to take, you know, all that uh, into consideration. But the other thing it, it does, and I think it accentuates the the getting of uh, uh, Nelson Cruz and Jonathan Scope, uh, for example. Royce Lewis is a year away. Don't know about Nick Gordon, but I mean, they've got some guys coming, uh, and and they're starting to get some flexibility. They signed Polanco. They think that he's going to be a shortstop. What if he turns out to be the second baseman? Because you know Royce Lewis is the is the kind of transformational shortstop that uh, that he could be. So I mean, the, the, all of these pieces uh, in the three dimensional uh, uh, chess uh, idea about talent and and budgets uh, it comes into comes into play. And so far. I think what they've done is, is very positive. And I think next week maybe we'll look a little, take a little bit broader look at the front office, what they've done. Because, you know, they've ticked off a lot of people because, A, they've traded away people, you know, when the fans wanted to see them acquiring people in the middle of, of a so-called pennant race. They haven't gone after the big free agents that, you know, so many vocal fans want them to sign. Let, let's end with this, though, Roy. And of course, in future episodes, when there's not so much news, we'll get back into talking about music and pop culture and Lobowski and everything else. But let's get back to this. I wrote earlier this week, you know, not only should they go sign Craig Kimbrell, but why not go sign Bryce Harper? And I wrote it knowing that it's probably not going to happen. It's maybe a 0.08% chance it's going to happen. But my grand point in mentioning it is that we now have all these analytical general managers and owners who have hired analytical general managers who are all saying, hey, you don't want to sign the guy for five years, to $150 million. It's going to end up killing you in some po- at some point. It's too much risk, not necessarily enough reward. But because that is the new mentality across baseball, including in the in L.A. market and the New York, New York market, this is a rare opportunity that where the Twins might be able to go sign a guy who might be the best player in baseball at the age of 26 for less than we might have thought. Am I crazy? No, I don't think you're crazy. It would, it would take some real, some real figuring, you know, on the part of the front office. And, um, it, it, but as to how, you know, what, what they'd be willing to your point, what, what are they willing to, um, to pay and how many years and what does that do to payroll and signing our younger guys uh, like Burrios and some of, some of these other guys? Uh, what is it? Can we, can we really, uh, can we really do that? Is it even feasible uh, to, uh, to be able to spend uh, even now at the reduced rates that these guys are probably signed for? Is it, is it even feasible to do that? And, and I don't know if it is. I, I don't know all of the, parameters that they, that they would be looking at. It's interesting though that Derek Falvey said we, and I think he was talking about Kimbrell for the most part and, and guys like that so we, we would really rather if we're going to spend a lot of money we'd rather spend it on a guy that's in you know that's entering the prime of his career or, or right in the middle of it than someone whose prime is 
you know, does, is largely behind him. It doesn't mean they can't still be uh, very effective, uh, but um, we, we'd rather have guys closer to coming into or right in the middle of their prime. That would be a Bryce Harper, you know, mm-hmm. about 26 years old, right? So, so he is, uh, you know, one guy that you could say, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe that's the, maybe we could, we could do that. Um, I, I think for, as a 26 year old, you can do it as a uh, bet on what he's going to produce going forward for the next four or five years. You could do that. I just, you know, what we don't know is, um, and, and young players need it that you like already on the team needing to get paid like Kepler and Polanco are being paid now. What's feasible? What can you do? We, we just don't, we just don't know how they'll, how they'll feel about that. Right. And the fact that they signed their right fielder to a long-term deal here probably indicates they're not going to go sign Bryce Harper. I, again, I never really thought no, they would. No, I don't know. I thought it was an interesting that. thought I, experiment, you know? Yeah, I, I thought, I, I read the article and I thought it was, I thought it was excellent. I thought, you know, you, you, uh, it, it, you, ought, you make good points all around, but I, where I, I, I don't think that the signing of Kepler for this money means they wouldn't do it. I think it means that they could do it and, and make it easier to trade, uh, Kepler for, because he's wrapped up, you know, for, you know, the five years at the, at the price, uh, he is. So I don't expect that to happen. I don't expect to sign and trade the, that young man. I think they like him going forward and, and all those kinds of things, but it, I don't think signing him in any way, uh, precludes them from, uh, you know, if they decided they, uh, they could uh, sign Bryce Harper. I don't think it precludes them at all from making a trade for Kepler. All right, good. So next week we'll talk about the signing of Bryce Harper and how he fits in the line. At least I hope so. Uh, <laughs> great, great stuff from Roy. We appreciate it. Again, we'll get back to a little more of our diverse conversations, but we want to hit the news hard today. Uh, I'm sure, but, you know, who knows? Maybe there'll be more news next week. I think it's going to be a fascinating twin season uh, on all kinds of levels. I'm looking forward to going down to spring training. And Roy, of course, is the best person to break it all down for you. Thanks for listening to TalkNorth.com, and we will talk to you next week. Yeah.